Now today I'm going to do something which I have been putting off for quite a while and uh, with good reason, the Pico PSU. <laughs> now this thing I've had for, you know, I think it's around a year now, possibly a little over a year. And uh, I was so afraid to do this project back then because, I mean, I'm always nervous doing power projects anyway, as in powering Amiga power supply projects. But I only had one Amiga back then. Now I have a broken 500 in the attic which powers up which I yeah, will be attempting to fix, by the way, at some point. And, uh, you know, at least I have something to test on that, you know, is broken already. So for those of you who do not know, a Pico PSU basically is a small PSU for use with ITX, um, Pico ITX motherboards. And uh, it's like a small, compact solution, really. Uh, so you can see the ATX connector here and uh, the input is uh, it will allow you to use a normal power brick. Now this particular PSU is 160 watts, which I believe, if I'm correct, is the highest you can get, the highest power rating you can get. But you're not gonna need that. <laughs> I mean, I got this because it was around about the same price as the lower wattage ones. So I just thought, hey, why not just go for 160 anyway? But I mean, for the Amiga, I think, uh, and for everything there, I think 100 watts or something like this, or 90 watts even, oh, will be fine. And of course, you're gonna need a power brick, which gives you, you know, this, the adequate power. I mean, the one which I have is 12 volts and 15 amps. So, I mean, that's gonna give more than enough for now I've seen people modding their Amigas and putting this actually inside the Amiga 1200, removing the squared in socket and putting this DC jack instead so they can just connect their a power brick straight into the Amiga and of course putting a power button on the Amiga itself. Now that would be amazing but um, I'm more comfortable putting this in a box like this, like a small box with a switch. And so first things first, I'm not going to use this jack, this power jack here. Uh, I'm going to use that for a future project so we can, you know, salvage that because that's going to come in useful later on. Okay, first things first, I'm going to plug this in and I'm going to just do some testing to see if it's the right voltage and so forth and if it's working. Just like do a little test, you know, along the way. So I plug this in and... Okay, so that's 12 volts, fantastic. And that is uh, negative, this is positive. Fantastic, now we can unplug that and continue. So here I have stripped down these to make the wires longer. Uh, I really hate stripping the outer sleeve of the um, multi-core cables. Just a little mention here before I continue. Uh, at the end of last year, beginning of this year, one of my patrons, Rudiger Stiel, gave me a one-off donation to put towards getting one of these. And I got myself a really nice screwdriver drill, which is just absolutely amazing. So a big thank you goes to Rudiger Stiel for this. And uh, yes, for with this, I will not accidentally kill myself like I did with that nasty screwdriver drill. <laughs> this is sturdy enough for me. And uh, it's just perfect. For the actual cables, uh, which are going into the box, I got these nice uh, cord grips, cord grips or strain relief or something like this, but I, I've always known them to be called cord grips. And uh, they sell them on eBay, you know, in packs in different sizes. So uh, I got a pack of these and um, I will just put this through here. Let's hope it fits. So we just cut some off here. And Let's just paint it with some flex. So nice to be able to paint it with flex. <laughs> it's like doing my nails, actually. And do the same with these on the board. Tin them. And then drill that freaking hole because I nearly forgot about the holes and just solder them together. <laughs> so pile it all first. Not much of a cable there, but at least there's like there's a bit of a strain relief on cord grip there. And yes, I know what you're thinking. This can easily be pulled out. However, the solution I have for this is un momento por favor. All right, cable ties. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is. So that cable die, it won't go through. Let's see 
like we just snip off the excess here and also I'm gonna need to connect I, I want to connect the fan in here and um, that is um, it's 12 volt fan but I want to connect it and see if it works on 5 volts because I don't need it to run fast therefore you know it'll just run quietly and that's fine by me so let's look at this uh, switch for a minute here and this is a 12 volt 20 amp switch with an LED now if you can see here that it has uh, two silver terminals and one copper colored. The copper colored is for the LED. Now let's have a look at the configuration of the switch. Now when you put the switch on, you can see it somewhat really dim lights up. Now the fact that it lights up here uh, means that it's going to need a resistor if you're going to use, if you can put 12 volts into it. Um, now this resistor, I mean the resistor will need, I think it's around 390 ohms or 360 ohms, I cannot remember. But the closest I have is 460 ohms. Uh, and it'll just be a little dimmer and that's fine. But that's the closest I have. When you click the switch, the contact will make this these two connect and also this go through the LED like that as well. So the current will go there, switching the LED on. So let's paint the switch's nails. <laughs> let's thin these first. And we just thin this wire here. And that is gonna be the 12 volt going in here. Straight from the, um, what you call it, the power brick. Now before we actually connect these to anything, we need to drill a hole for this switch in the lid here. Again, because, <laughs> you know, if you connect the wire, you know, you're not gonna be able to put it through the hole. <laughs> so I'm so glad I'm, you know, learning from the past and thinking, uh, thinking of these things. So, hole drilling time again. <laughs> Goodness, stuff is so much easier to do when you've got the right tools. Freaking. Rather than going downstairs and next to the cooker and melting holes through. <laughs> Ooh, perfect fit. Oh, nice. That is so satisfying. Okay, so I've stripped these wires here and I've uh, made a hole here and you know connect this also uh, put this in also and this is the amiga side of things um, also i've checked the uh, reference on my book here that is what i found to be you know the the right colors the commodore colors uh, and that's the pinout but do check do your own research if you're gonna follow this just make to make sure double check yeah <laughs> so um what I'm gonna do now is find out the pinout of the ADX and uh, just solder them on here at the ends here or maybe even just solder them to this. Now this shield, this shield thing here, I just recommend cutting it off and just insulating that somehow because it's, it's not neat. There we go, heat shrink tubing on that, and it's well insulated. I am being very pedantic with this, really pedantic, making sure that there's nothing that can, you know, short and go wrong or anything like this, because this is going to be right above the freaking board here. Um, it's just too close for comfort. It's going to be a bit of a squeeze, but I think it's doable. And no, I have not forgotten the fan. <laughs> the fan is going to, I'm going to find a plus five volts on this, and uh, connect the fan here. In fact, what I'm gonna do is make a hole here just for the fan. I'll do that now. <laughs> it's gonna be quite a squeeze, but I think it's doable. Yeah, it's doable, it's doable. It's fine. Okay, it looks like I've just misjudged the hole a bit. Um, as you can see, it's it's a bit walked out, but what I can do is um, kind of do this over here, and it won't be so bad, as you can see there. It's the biggest hole I can do, but that, that won't be too bad, you know, it still has some airflow, and I just need a little bit of airflow, and that's that'll be fine. 
Okay, so I've just like screwed in two screws on these fun screws. I hate these freaking stupid fun screws. But anyway, <laughs> I've managed to just um, do that and I think this is just gonna be fine. And you know, you'll just have that. It's very compact. It's just hard to kind of get that. I just hope nothing obstructs the freaking this thing here. Um, no, I just hope nothing obstructs this thing here. Um, <laughs> I'll try my best anyway uh, with all this. So yeah, next thing that I need to do. Oh my goodness, can be squeeze. Next thing I need to do is just locate the right uh, pins here, and just yeah, just solder the right these on that. And of course, the plus five volts. I'll find another one and put the fan on. Uh, put it on the fan. Okay, so according to this uh, schematic, schematic, <laughs> this one here, this uh, next one down here, that is minus 12 volts, the blue wire, which is on the Commodore, it's the white wire. Uh, so I will solder that first. I'm going to definitely test these before, of course, you know, doing test these with the multimeter first before doing anything, you know. You know what, I'm just going to solder it into the pins there because I really don't want to screw this thing up. Um, so I put some flex in there. That part is just that is too close to the the chips, the ICs, so I don't wanna I don't wanna risk that. Okay that is soldered in well, very well. Even though the freaking ADX uh, connector slightly melted but it's understandable. <laughs> Of course it's going to. Um, so let's go to the next one. So plus 12 volts is this brown one. Now which one is plus 12 volts? Okay, so the ground is just here, these notches here. Let's double check. With them. Okay, so now what we have left are both the 5 volts. 5 volts for this and 5 volts for the fan. So those are, I think it's just on the same line, you miss, the bottom one is common ground, and then there's 3 plus 5 volts. So we have some choice here. So freaking close. I'm trying to do them like s away from each other as, as much as I can. <laughs> Big moment here. Before I heat shrink this and close it up properly, uh, I'm gonna test it. As I know, test all the values, just make sure everything is right so I don't have to just go back in and. <laughs> so, is there anything coming out of this thing? LED switching on, that's good, but I need to know if there is anything coming out of this. Oh! The switch between the green and the black. Darn it! Well, at least, you know, I haven't glued it down or any stupid thing like this. So let's just... One, two, three, four. This is the green one. And this needs to be shortened to ground. So this and the one next to it. Next One next to it is ground. So these two need to be short, uh, thingy together. I'll just do it from here. It's easier. Okay, so we are here. And... <laughs> well, we haven't been anywhere else. What I mean is, um, everything's connected. I've um, shorted the green to the black so that, you know, it'll come on. Um, let me, gr I need to ground this, alligator clip this, alligator clip this ground, just there. Let's just push it all the way in so it's insulated. Um, right, good. So let's just test these pins now. And yes, the fan, of course, in the spins, that's a good sign. And uh, we just need to check the right voltages here. Um, okay, so we've I've uh, alligator clipped that. So let's check the plus five volts there. Just here. Fantastic, that's 5.19. And mine, the center one should be minus 12. Okay, that's minus 11.6. Okay, now the top one should be plus 12 volts. Yeah, 12.1, that's fine. And that's obviously shield, that's nothing. So yeah, we've got all the right voltages. 
and uh, all I need to do now is just like heat shrink that and you know close it up yes it's working <laughs> everything's fine right fantastico I just need to like do that closer oh I need to create the holes <laughs> I need to create the holes because the air needs to flow. Or else the fan's gonna create a freaking vacuum inside. <laughs> and they'll be like, you know, plasma. No, I'm just kidding, they won't be. <laughs> freaking plasma. <laughs> okay, so everything here is done and there's like any, you know, terminal, there's like a hot glue to just to insulate it or any chance of anywhere where something can touch something else. I've just had glued it, uh, just to again insulate it. So let's put this stupid freaking strings, <laughs> hot glue strings. Okay, so let's uh, screw this back together. I have to say that is actually looking good. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Okay, I'll do one more voltage check and we're more or less done. Let's get that broken Amiga 500 and you know, test it <laughs> because it's about the load, isn't it? And if the Amiga actually turns on. So, and now we do a power up test. Now, this Amiga 500 is actually um, it powers up, but it powers up with a green screen, which that means is a memory error or something, uh, or memory fault or something. I intend to fix this, so tr attempt to fix this, you know, in future, but not at the moment, it's not high priority. So let's kind of, you know, I'd rather test it on this. <laughs> so that actually powers up and I know that that's, you know, green lighting. Green lighting, I mean, <laughs> um, green screening. <laughs> green lighting. But that's um, working. You know, it powers the Amiga up itself. So as you can see here, it's just like mm -hmm. there's this brick going into here, there, and it's just like it's coming out of here and then going into the Amiga here. So it's just like an inline switch, but it's, I mean, it's like a little bit bigger, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's like 160 watt PSU, which is fantastic. And uh, yeah, it works. It's my Amiga 1200 with the Aka O30. It's powering all that up fine. Everything is working good. Just a little update here. Since I'm uh, creating this Pico PSU for my Vampire Amiga 600, I thought I'd get a better quality cooling fan. I mean, it is for my Amiga after all, so I decided to get this freaking Gleed silent fan. <laughs> Run it at 12 volts as it should be, full speed, but still running nice and quiet unlike the other one. And that is all for today. Please do like and share this video, do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. For now, I will say adios. For their generous donations, I would like to say a big thank you to my patrons. Alhand, Andrea, Andil Whittington, Boris Matishin, Brad Hansen, Cameron Armstrong, Carrie S. Turner, Carson Larvad, Casual Commodore, Counting Virtual Sheep, Eric Andre, Espen Galbeck, Gav Messingham, Hazemaker, James Burr, Jan Bita, Jim Leonard, James Hare, Linus Johansson, Marco Morin, Mark McDonald, Matthew, Matt Shepgar, Matthew Simpson, Mickey Holm, Nor E, Obraxis, Patrick Ekman, Peter Lingback, Ranzi, Ruski Flyer, Robert Menes, Rufi Otterstein, Roy Gelotti, Rudiger Stiedel, Sophie Leroy, Stuart Evans, Thomas Prisina, Thomas Muller, The Deeply Cynical, Tina, and Wayne Marsh. If you wish to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below, as well as links to my Patreon's websites or YouTube channels.